call the Dunbar and Board of Selectmen meeting to order for Thursday, July 26, 2023. All three Selectmen are present. Uh, recording for the town citizens, I have Mr. Bob Martel. Thank you, Bob, former Selectman. Um, I have the town administrator present. We also have the chair of the cemetery trustees. Oh, excuse me, former chair, oh. former chair of the cemetery <laughs> trustees. And we have the, some members of the energy committee, and we have a former town moderator in the audience. Welcome, everybody. Old home day. <laughs> Old home day, folks. Okay, um, Jim, I have two sets of minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes, June 22nd, 2023, as amended. I'll second those. Any discussion on those, gentlemen? No, no well written. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll make a motion to approve the non-public meeting minutes of June 22nd, 2023. I'll uh, second those. Okay. Motion. And those are not to be sealed. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to start in the back row for public comment. Is there anything public comment as I go? If you're not on the agenda, if you want to bring it up, bring it up now, Bob. I'm also okay. Up. Sir? Sir? Anything? Okay. I'm going to close public comment, bring it back to the board for town business. Uh, the first thing on the agenda, uh, we have uh, a spreadsheet with some, with some expenses and revenues. So basically what I do for the board is I provide you a quarterly... Um, Revenue and expense reports to keep the board uh, informed of where we're at. Um, from starting. what I can see, there isn't anything that's really outstanding. Um, we should technically be at about 50% because this is through June 30th. Which one are you looking at first? Thing? Expenses. Okay. Um, it's just kind of helpful for the board to just keep informed and know what's going on. Any outliers that you can point out? No, nothing really. Um, we do have a couple of big ones coming in very shortly out of the town building maintenance that we know about. Right, so the bids that we yeah. just approved. Yep. But that's still pretty pretty healthy, so I'll get started on yep. the fire station yep. roof. Yeah, they were getting uh, wording, correct? Yeah, for the... Uh, we, that's going to have to go out for a bid because it's going to be large. You yeah, it'll be. going to give you some wording on that? Yeah, the... Roofing guys that are doing the other two jobs. Okay. So Which as soon they, as they do that, I'll meet with. Them. Okay. And then the other thing that's coming out of that is a you know, fuel pumps down at the the trans uh, not transfer station. No, if he doesn't get going. Township, yeah. If I yeah. spend it all first. <laughs> no, the thing is, we budget, we raise the budget enough to cover for that, and so yeah. I think he's got concrete work to do, and some other work to do. But that's a work in progress. He's, he's yeah, well so, aware of that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk revenues now. Uh, our our Revenues also are pretty much where they should be. Um, there are a few lines that we've already um, collected the ex um, projected revenue um, budget, uh, which is land use change. For example, we budgeted uh, forty-five thousand. We come in at fifty-nine two fifty. I do have some outstanding current use land use change tax outstanding there that haven't come to fruition and we haven't um, billed them yet. But those are still possibly could come up in the next six months. Um, in this case here, the revenues, when you're at, well, exceeded your projected budget, it shows in a parentheses. That's the software the design, the way it works. Um, building permits are over their projected budget by $11,000. Motor vehicles are ahead too for being just half a year so far. That's good. Yep, they only need 37% for the remainder. Less birthdays run out on the end of the year, though. <laughs> so we're looking good for our projection. We probably will definitely exceed uh, the bottom line total, I hope. We're at 44% remaining. Um, nice. The, the, the biggest one, which we won't know till October, will be the uh, Women Meals. So invite your friends in Massachusetts to come up and spend their money in our uh, fine state. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lean. Okay. Next item. Uh, I have a. Do you do the... Yeah, I'm going to have Dave. Will you read that, please? Sure. We have a nomination for a cemetery trustee. I'll make a motion to appoint Judy Keefe as cemetery trustee. Um, 
for term ending March 2025. I'll second that. Any discussion? She was uh, vetted and she was actually recommended by the committee. Yep, she's been an alternate for a few years now. And uh, with Don stepping down, she's decided to step up okay. to the trustee position. All in favor? Aye. 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 This will be passed on to um, Linda Swear. Okay. Thank you, Justin, for the input. Okay, uh, next item, I'm going to go through the, uh, it says public comment. Uh, I'm going to hold off public comment there. I'm going to hold off public comment after the mailbox. Um, I have um, the, a letter, first letter to the uh, uh, Secretary of the uh, United States Department of Energy in support of the uh, Twin States um, Energy Project of upgrading the power lines and the substation in town. I. I drafted it. I got some word verbiage from the company, but I, I drafted it more towards Dunbarton because uh, I wanted to make sure it reflects our interest rather than their interest. And uh, I, you saw it on email. Any problems mm -hmm. with that? No. Nope. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and sign it. We all can. Uh, do I sign it only? This three. I think you can sign across the way. There. Okay. Three in a row. Yep. Yep. Excellent. David. But we're throwing our support behind uh, this project. Uh, if for the public, if you remember um, the Northern Pass, they were it was pretty, pretty much defeated because they didn't want to bury the lines. Well, this project is going to bury the lines up north in the, in the picturesque area, use existing lines uh, from, I think it's Claremont on south. And as it goes through Dunbarton, they're going to upgrade some of the existing lines to carry a higher amount of uh, power. And uh, what it does for Dunbarton, then by improving the lines and improve the substations in Dunbarton, we get a net increase in the valuation, tax valuation. And we don't have much industry in town, so we're in so favor of that if it brings power to New England. And it also helps the town directly by uh, adding valuation to our tax rolls, to the tax. Uh, so that's for the public. So I want you to understand that. And so we're, as a board, we're in support of that because it may bring additional tax revenue. And the predictions are right now, this is about maybe three, four years now, it could bring about a, a about a hundred, uh, about four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And that's going to be additional revenue. And that would equate a little over a, maybe a dollar twenty in tax rate at this in today's tax rate. And that would be on everyone's taxes lowering. So yeah. I think it's a win-win for the, the town. Okay. Uh, next one. We have another letter. Uh, we had, um, remember we had Mr. Soul last week? Yeah. And uh, I did some research with the police department, and um, I, I got input from all you guys, and uh, we wrote, drafted a letter to Mr. Menard and Mr. Soul regarding the dispute they're having on their 100 feet of roadway. Um, you all had a chance to read it. I'm just going to sign it, and I think uh, we can send it off uh, tomorrow. Just make sure the police chief gets a copy of the letter. Yep. And uh, the working on the letter was a teamwork approach. Uh, the police department gave us some great input, and uh, I think we tweaked it very well uh, on the email. Thank you. All right. We got some entry, uh, some repair dates for the town garage and the town offices. Um, for Lean, you should know this. Um, for the week of the 23rd and the 30th for the garage, town garages and the week of 23rd for the town office here. So yep. you, it may be a little noisy. Mm -hmm. I'll send out the notice to the department. Okay. And maybe put a thing on your web on the website and let the public know that it work in progress. It may be a, a watch out for fallen shingles. Um, if they give you a more specific day when they get closer on those weeks, yeah. at least for this building, if you wanted to shut the building down for the day, I don't think there's a big issue there. Because, I mean, you're going to have shingles falling off both sides. You're going to pick and up bang, the whole A lot of banging noise. I mean, it's, they typically do a roof like this in a day, so. Um, Maybe I'll reach out to them on email for that information. Yeah. I mean, if it's like a Friday, yeah, you true. already have a couple departments closed down anyway, so. Yeah. If you could work it out that way, I think it would be I think best. That, I think it would be close for a day. Yeah. yeah. As long as the public is aware of it. And Especially if it's a Friday, because 
Several of the departments aren't here anyway on Friday. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're in consensus? Yep. Lean, you, it's your action. Okay. Okay. Um, we've got second, town hall, second floor use. This is a new request. Uh, the board had mentioned to when we started out this program that any new request should be brought before the yep. select board. Um, I'm going to ask that at this time, where we've been able to uh, review some of the different committees' requests, uh, that if it falls within the realm of what you've uh, explained through your initial meeting, that and rather than burden the board, my office has been trained to uh, know what to look for. They have all been given the policy and the form to fill out at their uh, convenience and to drop it off at the office. And so I think it would probably alleviate your board um, business if I just handle it at the town level. So unless it's something that's really specific that um, doesn't fall under the guidelines. I, I think for one like this, it's going to be a pretty quiet meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Where I want to get the board involved when you're getting kind of a new outside group mm -hmm. that may be using the room to kind of extenuating circumstances. Yeah. I would like the board to be aware of those so that. Yeah, I think a situational mm -hmm. awareness would be important, especially yeah. if it's a new if it's a new entity which yeah. we have no knowledge about what they're going to do, and yeah. it's, if it's a large group, it'd yeah. be important. When it's like a, a baby shower or a wedding shower. Or something. Well, those aren't allowed yet, so yeah, nothing like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but if it was a large group of like a hundred fifty to hundred people, we should probably just chime in on it initially. But I, I, I agree with Lena. I think uh, it, so these these type of uh, smaller ones here, I think that okay. Yeah. And so they, they've asked something about I noticed in reading the email about storing the flags. Mm -hmm. We do have that storage room in the back there. Yep. yep. Um, so I asked, I called him to find out what he, the quantity of flags. He says it's three flags. One of each. Yep. And uh, I said, do you plan on leaving them just like leaning those, and rolled up? Or yeah. do you want to put them in a stand um, the way we have them in, this, in the meeting room? And he said, well, they could discuss it at this first meeting to find out what they would like to do. But would you object to them leaving them in a stand in the corner, or do you want them that. stored away in that back room? Uh, is I would, full right now? Like, I, would, I would just store them in that storage room. Only my thought is, you got kids up there, you start swinging around on them, break them, then, you know, okay, so who's to blame? If they're in the storage closet, at least only people that are getting stuff in and out of that should right. be using it. You, you may know. have to reorganize that at some point and get rid of some of those stuff. Well, I haven't gotten the plywood yet, but I'm going to have it delivered. But I'm going to roll that piano back out, which will open that back up to where oh, it should okay. be. Yep. I put that in there just while we did the floors. I just haven't had time to roll it back out. Okay, so that will free up some space. Yeah, and then I think we're going to let that group up there work on getting that tuned if they wanted to or whatever. Okay. But I actually have to get some good 3 ace plywood because it'll the, the mark the tiny wheels on there with the weight will just... Ruin the floor. Ruin the yeah. floor. The okay, so we're in consensus that lean handle the, the, the more routine request. And the, yeah. and, and your judgment, lean, and when you okay. have to think there's a unusual request, bring it to our attention. Yep. And I'll anyone you that, start. that's new does require that I meet with them. We go over the open, unlocking the door, assigning the pin, yes, showing them where everything is. So there is some um, initial meeting with that in group so that they understand what the yeah. is expected of them. Okay, okay um, next item. Uh, we've been, um, Kelsey Road, we've been doing some work up there. Uh, it's really this week came to fruition with surveyors. Uh, that that's a, uh, yeah, just, uh, we had some initial surveying work. It was unsatisfactory. The road agent is handling it. He's uh, not going to micromanage him, but he wants to have it um, uh, done a certain way based upon some subdivision planning that was done at the planning board level and so it's in the air it's in the uh, um, action for the road agent um, I personally have been in contact with um, uh, one of the abutters Mr. Guiney uh, referencing what was going on out there uh, he was going to come in and make some concern express some concerns tonight I alleviated some of those concerns and uh, so he's not coming in tonight um, but I would call it a work in progress regarding um, the placement of a utility pole uh, so it does. So it basically protects uh, uh, delivery of electricity and telephone service, and uh, respects people's property. Je Jeff's trying to get it so when the subdivision, which is going to be appro potentially approved, maybe he doesn't have to re relocate poles twice. 
and so he's working towards getting that done. But the initial work done by our surveyor was inadequate, and Jeff's aware of that, and Mike is aware of that, and so it's a, I call it a work in progress. If you have any questions, Jim, and I'd be more than happy to answer them, but I think we're good to go for now. We just let it let the work let the process continue. Here. Can you um, CC us on these emails so we can look at them? Yes. Uh, a lot of these emails just came into fruition within the last 24 hours or less. Yeah, because they were there on Monday on the afternoon. They yeah. in the office. And uh, my communication with with the road agent and Mr. Guiding was just last last evening. Okay. Dave, you good? Justin, questions? Dave, if not, okay, we'll move on. <clears throat> okay, we got a um, request for keys. Talk, talk to me about that. So we received an invoice from Beltates for 21 keys to the addition on the second floor. Did we ever get them rekeyed or get them fixed? I don't. I have the keys in my truck. Okay. Just so I haven't had time to do it. All right. So I'd like to hold off on this invoice until I get it. Yeah, that's corrected. a good idea. Okay, okay. all consensus on that one? Yep. Okay, uh, Primex. Notice from Primex right now, I work on comp compensation bill. Okay, this is one of our employees. I would just put this in the, in the personnel file of the individual, but yeah. obviously there's a, there's a dispute between Primex and one of our employees. Did you see that, David? No, I'll okay. kick out after. Okay. The ZBA notice, is that just from Donna? Yep. As an update. Yeah. I just want to take a quick look. Does she have the other notice in there as far as the... Uh, I haven't seen the other one. I haven't seen anything on it. I don't know when the date is on it either. Okay. Maybe ask her about that just yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, Lee, um, is this a... I, I just read this. There, It's a, almost a, a procedure. They're denying on procedure because he didn't get pre-approval. Um, I... I, I guess that would have to be something I'd talk to them directly about. Okay, could you follow up on that? I, I hate I to have a... I thought it said non-necessary. No, I think that... We advise your position with, uh, if your treatment assistant uh, for pre-approval under managed care, please be sure to comply with the requirements in the event that we are unable to honor a request for payment. It, something doesn't seem right here. There are doctors evaluating them as well as this doctor, and they disagree with the... Uh, the, the outcome. Okay. There's got to be a procedure to follow when there's a disagreement there. And you have to do a quick uh, survey of that to make sure we're, we're watching out for our employee. Yep. Okay. That's my concern. Agree, Dave? Yep. I think so, too. Justin? Okay. Okay. Uh, alluding to what uh, Dave just ch chatted about, we have a butter notification. There's going to be a zoning board meeting, I believe, um, Monday yep. at 7 p.m. here. And they must both be on that link, do you know? Is it on our website, do you think? It should be. Um, About the... Uh, she said she has a full night on the Are you familiar with that? I know which property it is. Probably outside on the board. Monday the 7th? No, yeah. the 10th. Monday is the 10th. Yeah. It's essentially a property without the required acreage for the uh, building requirement. Yeah. Okay. 7 p.m.? Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have a notification. We have good news to report. Um, we're going to be hiring the uh, 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 seasoned police officer. She doesn't have to. Go, he doesn't have to go to the academy. Um, we're going to swear him in effective uh, for the twentieth. 
And uh, if that's all right, Lean, we can get that on the agenda for the for the next meeting. Yep. He's going to be starting probably just uh, in the next uh, next week. Next week, he completes this week in Goffstown and moves on. And so it's uh took a look, took a long time coming. Any Are we going to do that before the meeting? Uh, yeah, we start at six thirty. He said six forty. Yeah, let's go to six forty-five or something. Yeah, I know that they said 7 p.m. in the email, but I'll... 645. It. That way we can... Uh, we're not here all night. And uh, we can... Okay. Um, next item is... Uh, we have a... Uh, we had a gentleman in town. We had an issue with uh, collecting some... Uh, uh, in violation of... Uh, uh, zoning requirements. And he was, uh, he, there was some errors. We sent him a certified mail. He, it's been received. And we are leading an update on the agent of communication with us, and we should have a settlement soon. Yes, he said that he would put a uh, check in the mail. Okay, excellent. And that's an FYI. He, obviously, he finally got it. He, I think you alluded to the fact that he was the it went to the neighbor's address. He did. Okay. But um, I made sure I sent it mail, certified, and then I attached it to the email. So he got it three ways and acknowledged it. Okay, excellent. I thought uh, I thought just for the board, gentlemen. I thought uh, when we discussed it last time, we were very reasonable. Uh, we didn't uh, overly uh, penalize him. I thought we were just meeting him halfway. I thought it was uh, treat him like a person. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to open up for public comment now. Back row, Bob. Well, you're talking about the uh, the power, the high. Power from I think it's coming from Quebec. Hydro Quebec. Yeah. The Hydro Quebec. Yes. They've already got the lines almost established to go south of us. Wow. And we're the ones from Goffstown going south. They've yeah. already done their work. So. Wow. It, the thing is, it was an interesting presentation, um, but you know, it's one thing to promise pie in the sky or great things. But they came in here and talked to us, and what I, my concern was, oh, it's going to impact our electricity rates. It's going to lower them. And I've heard politicians talk about that. I've heard other people talk about that. Prices really go down when it comes to price of electricity. And if it does, great. But the only benefit to this town, to the citizens of this town, is they're going to improve their infrastructure. And as, once they improve the infrastructure, the substation and the wires, we get tax revenues off that. And we, they get to depreciate over the years, but instead of being 50 years old, now it's going to be one year old. And we'll start taxing them appropriately. And so that's the real benefit to this town. I don't foresee uh, electricity um, a boom. I think it's a boom to Massachusetts where they have a requirement to go green energy. I think it's a boom to Connecticut and Rhode Island. But to New Hampshire, I'm not going to hold my breath, Bob. Okay. Is that going to be a DC line or AC? AC. AC. Yeah. They would so like to be able to send. Replace the AC lines. They know. They would like to be able to. Uh, they're going to. The line is actually sized large enough, but the insulators are not. So they're going to replace all the insulators. The poles they said were put in 1936. I want to say. Yeah, I think so. And they're still. They say they're better construction now than what they put in new. Yeah. You know they were really well designed back then. I guess. So they don't have to widen the existing right away. No, no. <coughs> that was how a concern I had as well. How does that affect the landowners taxes? Did it increase the value? Increase? No. No. Because no. no. the easement's already in place, Fred, and they're going to be paying a larger amount to put the more power over it. Yeah. So it's just the utility paying more to us. When we say us, the town. So we feel that's that's where the value is to the Dunbar residents. They're talking eight to ten years before it could be constructed large enough to go through, with all the regulations they've got to go through. So, yeah. who knows what we'll be paying then in taxes? But and, and the thing is, and I asked them point blankly, who else is competing? There are there are approximately eight com competitors. Two are going to be selected. So there's no guarantee that this particular company will be selected. There are other projects out in the out being done. So uh, we remain hopeful. They're bidding for the infrastructure money from the government there. But I know it's so, like a twist to the road. They've already done major work over there. You know, for now that is a separate line. Yeah. 
that's uh, public service ever sources upgrading those lines oh. on the little delivery section in your yeah. bill they're allowed to upgrade those lines they've done it the last three or four years here in a row and they basically use all the money that's allotted to them every year that's why you keep seeing them working on them because they're if they don't use the money they have to give it back yeah. nobody so, ever gives money back yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> They'll be over there painting them next year. <laughs> John, anything else? John, anything else? Don? Nothing for the group? Okay, I'm going to bring it back to the board. Are you not here for Old Home Day? Yes. Okay, then step up. This is, oh yeah, Old Home Day, come on up. Come on up. You guys almost got sent home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they thought it was Go Home Day. Go Home Day. <laughs> Now our goal is 7.30, so. <laughs> we're almost there. Well, it's old. We were almost there, Mike. <laughs> okay. okay, who's the spokesman here tonight? I think Mark had it started. But oh, go ahead. Uh, well, first of all, uh, this year for Old Home Day, we've got uh, the 1st New Hampshire Regiment coming. And what they do is, uh, number one, they're going to march in the parade. Uh, they're going to fire off a couple of volleys uh, during the parade. Revolutionary War period? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're recommended by the Sons of American Revolution. It's a 501c3. Okay, but muskets. Muskets, yeah. Okay. Muskets, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they will set up a few tents out here and do a cooking demonstration. We need your permission to put a fire pit in the ground right here on the corner. And that, uh, they'll have water buckets and stuff like yeah. that. Why don't we do where the lawn's already pretty well gone? Well, they, they had told me that they would, would uh, peel the uh, uh, sod back and, and uh, lay it aside, set up their uh, cook cooking ap apparatus. And at the end of the day, they would they would put the side side back on and dump water on it. Uh, of course, yeah. Got a comment from the public? You know, uh, when they had the dedication of the Caleb Stock statue, yes, they had in the camping over here, and they camped right on the edge of the, the pavement on on the dirt. They had a trench cooking fire about maybe three feet long and about a foot wide and about a foot deep. They take it all out. And put it aside, and when they're all done, they put everything all back the way it was. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have as long as they're not near the trees. I, th I don't have an no. issue with it. Yeah. Okay. And Thank you. they were issued a, a campfire permit at that time too by the fire department. So it sounds yeah. like you better see Fred for a permit. Well, yeah. <laughs> First, we need to see you yes, because the as the board of selectmen, you oh, yeah. are the representatives of the landowners. No, uh, of town. course, of course. Yeah. If you say yes. Then we go to Fred for the permit. Yeah. If you say no, no, I, I think we are consensus. No, cons we go. Okay. Let's go. Green light. Uh, second thing is they're bringing their cannon, and we're going to set it up to fire over the cemetery. They're going to fire it at one one p.m. and two p.m. And the two p.m. one is the signal of free ice cream, which all of you will be there to help scoop and everything up. And, but we wanted to get permission to be able to fire that. Plus, they'll be talking history with people, and they'll be doing... Uh, we'll be grape shot and musket ball. Yeah. What's <laughs> the official date, Don, for the record? August 12th. Grape shot. August 12th. August That's 12th. my birthday. Oh. Yeah. Having old home day. Good time to scoop ice cream. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Great okay. thing to do. I, I, gentlemen, do you have any problems with cannon fire? Nope. I uh, don't this year. I imagine next year we... It, it, but they will be, be doing uh, uh, marching in between uh, their campsite and stuff like that, talking to the kids about history and things along this line. I think it adds a little excitement for the children. I think yeah. it does. So they, you know, they got a nice brochure and everything. It has all the details on it. And uh, I'd say we we use that for marketing as appropriate for old home day. Yeah. So you know, it's bring. History Alive here in Dunbarton. Is okay. What, we're what to time do. is it starting, Don? 10? Huh? What, day, what time is it starting? Uh, well, they'll march in the parade, so they'll be here probably... No, when's the parade start, I guess? Uh, 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. That's the start. 10 a.m. And 
the vendors are going to be setting up uh, after 8 o'clock in the morning and uh, they'll be here at 8 o'clock to set up their tents and things along this line. They'll have three, four tents. They'll have a cooking tent and uh, they'll be doing baking. Uh, that's both men and women. And when they get ready to shoot the cannon, they put out cones here on there to block traffic and the ladies stand to one side and that, uh, you know, sort of are runs across. Are, are, are they insured? Huh? Are they insured? I believe so, yes. Okay, I need to get a, I need to get an absolute yes. Okay, I'll, I'll double check on that. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If They're they not break, shooting anything out of them. No, but the thing is rattling <laughs> windows and I can just see the people. Why don't we do this? Kaminsky flies out of the cannon. <laughs> 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 but we're going to try to post so people will know that at 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock there's going to be a cannon firing off. Understood. So. Okay. Sounds like a plan. I okay. think Bob liked that one. I do too. <laughs> well, I know that Dave or Justin <laughs> would probably plug it. So. Yeah. I was going to say, we're not going to plug <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> All right, you're fired. <laughs> okay. All right, so, um, and it usually wraps up around between three and four, so that's wrapping up, as I understand. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the next thing that we want to do is have permission to be upstairs in the town hall. Uh, at eight o'clock, we're going to have a, uh, another cupcake and cake baking contest. It'll be more decorating than anything else. And they'll bring them up there at eight, and we'll judge them. And then after the parade and that way, and for the ice cream, we'll bring them down and put them. So there'll be limited access just for the judges to go up there. The first of the the people to deposit their yeah, deposit. They'll bring up their their entries. Okay. And now uh, you want to have everybody parade up there and look at them all day long? Or is that no, what no. It, it, oh, just the uh, location to put it. Just, just the location and that. We'll have four tables. So there's. Uh, 16 and under for each one and then 17 and older and that way uh, there'll be four different groups or four different classes. The concern is once we open the library doors, and one thing I had... She's closed on Saturday. Oh, I know, but once we open them, uh, they got to be closed again because that, what we don't want to do, uh, the thing is we fought this back and forth, is we don't want to open up, all the public restrooms are open. And then we get 100 people flushing the toilets, and then we don't have any toilets for the business offices on Monday. Well, the other thing is we want to be able to have our magic show upstairs. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 Dave, what, I, mean, I, I mean, this is why we did the town hall. No, it's not. No, it's not. We've okay. got, we did it for meeting space, for a public meeting space. And this well, what, is, what time is the magic show? Well, it would be 1 o'clock. Um, so you could One open. Two, then they the could open cream. it for the event and then close it back down. So it's just the event time. All right. I, don't, I, I like to think about that. I don't want to make a snap decision on this one. I, I just don't feel comfortable with this one. I, th th I think he, he, it's he's, right, he's right. We, we did get it restored so that All we right. could could use it. This is a town event. A town right. event, though. Though so the thing is, so the restrooms will be open to the public and just use it. So he doesn't have to just get during no, that think, time. Period. Just turn just during that certain time period. Like we should be. Uh, yeah, we could put a sign on the door saying the this the second floor will be open during this time only. for the. Magic just so we don't have hundred people pulling on the handle. Please use restrooms outside. No, I, yeah. I, I don't know why to go that far, but the thing is that... Well, we do need that sign because yeah, hundred people, people will go pull on the handle. People oh, for sure. Yeah. That we'll have to put a new knob on yeah. the end of the day. If you know. and then the other thing is... Um, I bust it off. The other thing I, I want to point out to the, my colleagues here, but uh, during, their, during their, our open house, what I, what I, my, my biggest fear came to fruition. I had kids going up and down the elevator while elderly people could not use it, and kids were screwing around with the elevator. Day one. And the thing is, I don't want that elevator to be used for five-year-old, six-year-old kids to go up unattended on the, on the second floor. The thing is, it's going to break, and once it breaks, it, all bets are off. It can't be used any longer. Yeah. And that's it's, a problem. It's not an amusement park, right? Yes, but you, you tell a nine or ten year old kid who doesn't who has no parents supervising him that he can't go up and down the stairs. He goes, let's push some buttons, push them all in there. And then I have an elderly couple who wants to go up there with their grandchildren. They're waiting and waiting, and then the then it breaks. Maybe since it's brand new, maybe have a committee member, you know, overbuy it 
So if you see that as it's going on, you could it, flag it down and say, I, hey, I, stairs. Don, I'm, I'm very cautious about that because mm -hmm. the thing is, this whole town has worked too hard to get the upstairs operational. And once that elevator breaks, it's all bets are off. It stops. Well, I think during the grand opening, the, you know, the ribbon cutting, I think uh, uh, one or two people used the elevator. Uh, Probably because the kids were using the rest of the time. <laughs> no, not during the library, but I mean our ribbon cutting, and that uh, I yeah. think. Uh, but during dur during that afternoon, I mean, yeah, kids, uh, kids, ki wife kids, what kids were kids were yeah. using the elevator, and the yeah. thing is, a ten year old kid who has got no supervision goes up and yeah. pushes all the buttons. We don't need that, and that is, and you're gonna have kids everywhere. A lot of them unsupervised initially, for, yeah. going for the magic show. So I think that needs to be monitored. Agreed, gentlemen. I think yeah, I do. Uh, we'll monitor on that, but I did. Uh, I did make sure when I spoke with the elevator guy at the end. He says, "This is called a Lulu, but it is a commercial grade elevator, and it's subject to this use, and it's not going to break down." With well, them. even breaking down, but it just deny is a deniability. It's so slow, it denies any. They don't want it twice, typically, because <laughs> it's so slow. Well, it's very slow. but it, it denies the availability for an elderly person. And I understand the cautiousness of it, but I think we should still. Use the building. Oh, we, yeah, and, we and, and I, 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 I understand where you're coming from. I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, but I think is if we're going to use the building, I want to have precautions in place so Correct. it doesn't happen. Correct, but I don't think we should say not use the building. No, that's where I'm, I'm backing make, down a little can bit. Can we make the kids disappear? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not put them in a box <laughs> and saw them in half. Because you're not going to have the <laughs> stage outside, or are you still going to have the stage outside? Yeah. Are you going to have the stage outside? Yeah, right now. The stage. Yes. Okay. Yep, yep. No, I said, are you still going to have the stage outside? Oh, yeah. Uh, they're going to have the uh, uh, animal encounter out there. On the stage? The on the, sta on the uh, outdoor stage. Okay. And, that, and then we'll have uh, Liz in the bandstand with her group, you know, to, in between music and stuff like that. So. so you're only having it for that one function? Yeah, basically. After you do the pies. Well, we wanted to possibly have a dance up there, you know, after four o'clock also for the, for the band. It, it, we're, that's what we're looking into. So, I mean, you know, that's how the space was used previously. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's... I think I'm okay with it as long as it's open during the activity and then close back up, Don, then open during the next activity and then close back up. Okay. The biggest thing is we don't want it left open all day because people will not use these outdoor facilities at all. I know if I'm given the choice, I wouldn't use them. <laughs> you know, you're going to use an indoor facility if it's there. Yeah. The problem is we have the um, proper amount of bathrooms in there, and the system's been upgraded, but if we abuse it, I think that, you know, we could go the wrong way with the system. So, yeah. So is, is that uh, a, dan a dance after the evening, in the evening dance, is that on the agenda or is that no? Is that something new or is he just throwing it out there now? Well, it's a work in progress. Okay. Because you could just have live music like we had earlier. Yeah. At our, at our thing too. Yep. Yeah, it won't necessarily be a dance. I mean, people right. can dance if they want. But yeah. yeah. All depends what they make, unless they make it a 4-H dance or something. Yeah. Well... It's a work in progress. Just, just keep us informed on that. Yeah, I, we, haven't, we haven't got a band yet for it or anything like that. So. Well, if it's 4-H, Mike and I'll do -si do for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sock hop. Anything else? <laughs> so we have a tentative date of August 12th. Um, we have the cooking regiment. The regiment's coming and doing their cooking and demonstration. We have cannon fire. We have the stage going to be used for the magic show and possibly a dance and music afterwards. All right. Um, I'd be leery. The thing is, after being out all day, I just remember over the past several years, at the end of this day, it's 4 o'clock, and people go to the winds, and they haven't come back or stick around. It may be a little challenging to get people to come back again. I, I throw that out there, only, and I throw that as an idea for planning, because uh, as soon as the ice cream's over with, it's like, and the vendors start packing up, people go to the four winds. Yeah. And so, I, I just throw that out there in your thought process. No, no. And that does cross our mind, but what we we're looking at is we plump size it, and that and it'll be the first dance in the new building, yada da da da. da and that may be the be the uh, you know, the it, hook. It, it's up to the marketing department to get that. Across. Amen. <laughs> the only other thing I want to remind you guys is, this is going to be your event. So just like all the other events, you guys will be responsible 
for the opening up, the setup, the clean up, all that, you know, yeah. the carry in, carry out. So it does add a lot more responsibility on you guys as well. Par for the course, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the thing is, I'll, I'll give you one example um, of inadequate cleanup. We were, we, the Suckman, were responsible for cleanup of the, uh, of the facility. And uh, I don't think we did a good job of cleaning up after we left. And we were stuck with an excessive bill from our cleaners. Well, they, I wouldn't say it was excessive. I thought it was pretty reasonable. Well, it was day. more than we anticipated. But there was cake on the floor, and there was spilled other drinks. Stuff there spilled drinks, so they cleaned it up. Yeah, and you know, I thought it was pretty low. Uh, for what I, I thought it was just the opposite because we do pay them already. That was on top of what we normally pay them. But if you remember, our agreements were set up for, you know, fifty dollars, uh, and this one was more than that. But I agree. But the thing is, um, remember our policy is we're not charging any user fee, and it's coming back to the. Uh, to the citizens of Dunbar and have to pay for that, not us. It's or it it's comes out of the taxes, and when when the group uses it, and it's not cleaned up, it comes back to your fellow taxpayers, and we're gonna pass it right on to the taxpayers. Can I just make a recommendation? Yes. They oftentimes will um, collect fees for the tables, which they're doing this year, and that becomes unanticipated revenue which the board accepts just prior to their meeting. In the event they don't have enough funding in the budget, they have a little uh, cushion there. If they don't use it, maybe it's something that the board consider using toward, to offset any increased cost. Well, the thing is, if it goes, to, gen event. If it goes to general revenue, it's, it's a wash anyways. So. Right. It's just it will overspend on the budget side, but True. it will be I'll offset. bring one more thing up just so we can get it out of the way. Um, we've helped you on those handicapped baths in the past. You haven't asked about those tonight. Mm -hmm. What's your guys' plan on those? For the handicapped bathrooms? It's yeah, do you remember you guys have come to us the past couple of years yeah, and asked yeah. us for uh, <clears throat> split it or whatever we've done with you in the past? I know that there's been something. Hennifer Septic has been contracted for the porta potties again. And I'm quite sure we have contact, contracted them for at least one of them to be handicapped. Okay, good. Yeah. Do you have enough money in your... So far. So, so far. far, okay. Our, our, our next meeting has more and more in, 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 info gets, gets gathered. We will, we will re review our budget and adjust accordingly. Okay. Basically, we're meeting... The out next Thursday here, and you guys, you know, will kind of leapfrog. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I just uh, on the thing is, I thought a really big hit in addition to the free ice cream was the uh, the uh, old fashioned old home day prices. Oh yeah, is oh, that nice. going to be sustained? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, we don't know where our meat cost is, but it, it'll be very basically expensive. close to cost. Yeah. 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 Okay, that was well received, and the thing is, um, I think the public really appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah, I think every year they do. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's Good, but we have a comment from the public. You know, something just came to my mind is that uh, an engineer had told us about a concern he had with the library ceiling, and so has anything been looked at since we had that talk? Only because, I, you know, I don't know how many people would be dancing, and I probably wouldn't do anything, but it may, and I don't, you know. We're All just, I know is that it was problematic, if you remember, that when he looked at it, he mm -hmm. said it should be looked at because it was separating. Well, he saw that lathing separating, but um, depending if, if the joists were rough cut and one was smaller than the other, that would already lathing some, sometimes is separated just to even out a ceiling. So we're just going to keep an eye on it and keep an eye on the joints there, and I've been looking at it as I'm going in. I haven't seen anything yet, but that's all we can do is keep an eye on it. So maybe in our planning we need to consider do we want to have a dance or do we just want to have music? No, I think do whatever you I want think to do. I think a dance is, a, is, is, is still, I think, I don't want to, uh, I don't think we should torpedo I mean, I anything. Think our, our, our capacity is well below what they originally planned for that. Right. So I think. And the thing is, um, I don't think you're going to exceed 150 people up there. Yeah. So, no. Bob, we could put, I, I think, uh, it's 25 on the stage and 225 in there. We've kind of limited it to about 150 right now, which we only have 105 seats up there currently. Okay. From I'm my just count. thinking of the harmonic motion yeah. when you're dancing. 
you know, that has uh, a uh, impact on what's below. And you know, mm -hmm. all I know is the concern that was brought to us. Yeah. And you know, we, that yeah, was he asked us to keep an eye on it. So. That was something that I thought we were going to look at at some point in time, anyway. just to make well, sure. Would be a good were, test for it. Yeah. 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 I mean, you got to find out sooner or later. Yep. I, I concur. Okay. I know on the upstairs stage. We just want to help you out. <laughs> we put additional screws on the stage to hold that up, but that ceiling was in much worse condition. It was already all full of puncture holes anyway, mm -hmm. so you really don't notice or see the screws holding that up more. The biggest thing down bottom is finding the proper layout to get not just into the strapping, but the strapping into the joist. I, I understand that, but if you can remember what happened to the ceiling upstairs, and you don't want the same thing to happen right. in the library. You know, that's that's the only concern I have because I think Mary might be a little upset. Yeah, well, we're just going to have to keep an eye on it. Okay, okay. Yeah. When we used to have a tin ceiling up there, we just tacked up to a strapping. And they had the brilliant idea that below insulation up there, there was too much weight. Yeah. That came down. Could that possibly have got, caused the, the problem also of the weight of that ceiling before? Well, the tin ceiling, there's very little weight in the insulation. It was damp on a day like today that it yeah. fell, from what I understand. Yeah. So the humidity was in the insulation that caused it to fall down. Yeah, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is that it also uh, made the weight go down to the next ceiling from caused the problem that... Fell no, off. that weight, because the, the floor is all there, that weight's so minimal. You could never get close to the, the weight of having 225 people there, you yeah. know. Okay. Any other comments? Any the committee? Any other rec any other concerns? So just uh, all I ask is keep the board informed. Yeah. Uh, the most we can say is no, but the thing is, most of the, the, what we want to say is yes, yeah. and we just want to be cautious as we go through this. Mm -hmm. You can see I'm I'm the more cautious of the two. I'm getting I'm getting the lambast from both sides, but it's good. We have a discussion about it, and yeah. we work to a solution. That's the goal here. We want to make sure to keep the outdoor bathrooms, keep people used to using them. Well, you know, once they use them for the first half of the day. You know, knock on wood, the second half day the probably is not going to be as heavy a use, you know, so. Well, what we'll do is uh, two weeks from today we'll come back in because we'll have our meeting next Thursday. And we'll have more of a, a plan so that you'll be able to see exactly what we're going to be doing. And go from there. I'll have the, the answer to your insurance question. Yeah. And go from there. Hey, thanks for coming to us before planning all the events as well, you know. It's sometimes we see on a flyer, okay, hey, they're going to have this big thing, but nobody even asked us. So I, I appreciate you guys and applaud you. Uh, you did already put it out? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I just had two of them with me. There's more out down the hall. <laughs> it's a good start. <laughs> oh, there. Right. Oh. We, we're, we're good. We're good. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to say thank you for coming in. Let's keep the dialogue, keep it open, keep yeah. communicating. Uh, concerns, and uh, we have, we'll, sh we'll, sh we'll throw our concerns out there and we'll work through them. That's the bottom line. Okay. And we would much rather work on those before rather than after. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. But you, again, you understand some of my concerns. And, yeah. and the thing is, um, again, I just don't want our investment to be squandered away in year one. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I think. Uh, Thanks for coming in early. It means a lot for us to know what's going on. And when people ask us, we don't have to look dumbfounded because we've seen it someplace else already. Yeah. Okay. Have a great evening. Okay. You too. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Mike, you might hit eight. <laughs> I'm, I will hit eight. All right. No, I think it's good we talk about things. Oh, Thanks, guys. Uh, open good forum. Job. Yeah, that's good. Later. Yeah. Because we bring different opinions to it. Good to see you for the program. <laughs> okay, um, Talene. I have nothing for the board tonight. Okay, no more vacation for you for bringing nothing to the board. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nothing. Nothing. Dave. No, uh, I'm going to probably start on that RFP within the next couple of weeks. I get a couple of busy weeks going on, and then I'll hit that again but I'm glad our roofs are underway yeah the RFP is for the public the RFP is uh, we have a major roof repair at the police fire department uh, it's two different just two different different building structures and uh, the building needs uh, some repair in the roofing repairing the doors uh, there's a couple things that need to be done there and it's going to be uh, 
over our contracting threshold so that RFP, we have to send out requests for proposals when we, once we get the specifications down. Okay. Um, I have nothing. Perfect. I have nothing. Motion to adjourn. So I'll be second. it. Second. Uh, eight. No, 7.50. I beat 8 o'clock. Yeah. Lee, you're going to be in tomorrow morning? I am. To Lee. You notice how thin the satchel is getting? Nice. That's all I'm taking. Black of this, you cleaned it out. And well, the thing is, I don't take it with me no more. <laughs> no, I don't either. So. Well, the thing is, what I did one time is, is I took too much with me. Lean called me the Friday morning. Did you take some of the documents with you home? I said, oh, yes. You don't take any of these printouts either? <laughs>